on this episode of Wrecked. A bottomed out truck blocks a four lane road, but another towing company beats O'Hare to the scene. Let me speak to Rich, I need him right away. But I am vicious when it comes to competition and I'll cut their throat anytime I can. 42,000 pounds of cargo threaten to tip over a big rig, and it's Joey's job to set it straight. You see that, how bad she's leaning? That whole load is shifted. This is just a recipe for a catastrophic failure. A tractor trailer gets wedged inside a tunnel in downtown Chicago. What are you doing? Get in there. And some of O'Hare's young guns get fired up, trying to get it out. Fire and wood, that usually means bigger fire. Chicago has more than 20,000 miles of highway full of breakdowns, spills, and wrecks. It's a dangerous mess, and somebody's got to clean it up. Bill runs O'Hare Towing with his wife, Marcy, his brother, Joey, a fleet of high-tech trucks, and a team of dedicated drivers who risk their lives every day, ready to respond at a moment's notice to the next big wreck. Chicago is one of the country's busiest transportation hubs. With over 60 million tons and $17 billion worth of cargo passing through every year, its streets are teeming with tractor trailers, but some of these massive trucks wind up staying longer than expected. 607, so I didn't need you to respond. Cicero and Lawrence. Lawrence and Cicero. In the Mayfair neighborhood, an 88-foot tandem trailer is stranded in the middle of a service road for the Kennedy Expressway. The driver avoided disaster by not crashing his 14-foot tall rig into a 13-foot overpass. He quickly turned his trailer and instead bottomed out, cutting off all through traffic. Dwight is the nearest O'Hare driver to the scene. But when he arrives, he finds out he's not the only one there. A competing tow company shows up as well. I'm on the phone with the company. We got it. There's a lot of competition in the towing industry. And Bill, O'Hare's owner and operator, doesn't like to lose. There's one company in Chicago that has more trucks than us, but they don't really do the same kind of work as we do. I think we dominate the market. And if there was going to be something that had to do with towing in Chicago, I wanted someone to think or say, hey, we got to get O'Hare involved in this because they are the guys. But I am absolutely vicious when it comes to competition, and I'll cut their throat anytime I can, because I just deserve the work, because I'm that good. Dwight knows that Bill despises losing a tow to another company, so he wisely decides to call O'Hare dispatch for backup. Let me speak to Rich. I need him right away. The guy at this company telling that they can go ahead and do this call. Well, besides, they don't got a truck here either. Hell no. A lot of times, the driver of any company that we come across is always going to be the competitive things between towing companies. So right now, this is real hectic that a lot of times like this, I don't nobody want to step on toes right now. Right. Bill sends his kid brother, Joey, to the scene to set things straight. Uh, right now, I'm going to try to figure out what exactly we got going on here. Sir, if you call your breakdown manager, you got everything uh, under control for you. Down here in the city, it's sometimes a different beast, and you really got to put your game face on before you even come down here. In the end, the competition's two-ton standard-issue truck is no match for O'Hare's heavy-duty wrecker. A versatile monster that can tow a compact car or a 12-ton dump truck. Dwight's plan is to attach a snatch block and double his cable for extra strength. Sounds simple, but snatch blocks are one of the most misused items in all of towing. You can easily overload the cable, which can snap, and turn the block into a 10-pound, high-velocity missile. The reason why I put up in the cable right now is for strength. Dwight makes sure to plant the cable low on the truck to keep it from tipping over. Whoa. Uh, Dwight did a low pull, doubled up his lines, good operator would, uh, hooked up to the strongest part of the truck, the frame. The guy lived really some brakes, put her in reverse a little bit, and he just kind of tugged her out. He good. He good. With the truck free and the road clear to rush hour traffic, the rig is back on its way. 
Even though the competition tried to swoop in, O'Hare beat out their rival. They may have won this battle, but for Bill and O'Hare towing, the war is far from over. I don't feel I have a large enough footprint in the Chicagoland area to control the market the way I want to control the market. Tony, that call's been hanging two hours. Towing companies in general is driven by the first question anyone asks, how many trucks you got? Well, I got a lot. How many do I want to have? As many as it takes to control the market. For Bill and Marcy Graziana, towing runs in their blood. This husband and wife team both came from towing families. Their towing roots span three generations. And ever since Bill and Marcy took over the company, O'Hare has tripled in size. Now their current facility on Mannheim Road is being pushed to its absolute limits. They need to expand. The facility that we're in, my father built back in the uh, late 70s. This new facility that we just purchased uh, a few months ago is in Downers Grove. It's a great facility. It's almost four acres. It's 45, 50,000 square feet, something like that. Uh, the construction has started. We hope to be in in the next few months. I just want it to be done. This, that's where Marcy steps in. That's her, that's her deal. But the construction guy needs to talk about the money and everything, so we need to go over that, but I'll handle it. Bill and Marcy have been married for 19 years. She's O'Hare's vice president and no stranger to the world of towing or to Bill's stubbornness. Bill doesn't like construction. Bill doesn't like the decisions of the little stuff. You know, he would rather be sweeping his shop than doing this. He would rather be doing anything than standing here with me picking out stuff. Don't you love these decisions? No. Not quite sure why I'm here right now. I really want to get him cranked up. I always go, you want to help me pick colors out? And he'll be like, you know. Like you tell, I'm sure there's somebody far more qualified to do this than me. I like to tell people I have ADD, but I, uh, I get to a point where I can't talk to these guys for that long because the whole process of, you know, what color tile and are we going to have a ceiling fan? I really don't care. Just say yes, dear. I love that. Next, the construction of O'Hare's new headquarters is starting to take its toll on Bill. I'd much rather be standing in the median somewhere up to my knees in mud and snow. A 53-foot trailer gets stuck in an overpass in downtown Chicago, and Javier tries to muscle it out. And later, 42,000 pounds of cargo threaten to tip over a trailer stuck on a snowbank. You see that? How bad she's leaning? That whole load is shifted. <laughs> In Chicago, it's been a fairly easy day for O'Hare Towing. Owners Bill and Marcy are busy with the construction of their new offices, while the morning shift has had only a simple bottomed out trailer to deal with. The boys in the shop are hungry for a good challenge. 307, howdy. Lower with the drive for rich job. Get out of here at the uh, 10 South Wacker. A call comes in that a tractor trailer headed for Maine is jammed under a downtown bridge. The truck came barreling through 400 feet of bridges. The driver cleared about 300 feet until the roof of the trailer started to graze the ceiling. But instead of stopping to figure it out, he floored it and crushed the roof of the trailer. Now he's wedged in so tight, the trailer is pressing down on its wheels and the belly of the truck is starting to buckle. Javier is the first O'Hare guy on the scene and he recognizes the driver. Earlier in the day, the same guy had a problem with leaking brake fluid, and now his bad day has gotten even worse. The disabled tractor trailer has shut down a lane of one of Chicago's busiest roads, so the pressure is on to get that thing out of here. Javier's plan is to hook his wrecker up to the trailer and push or pull the load out in either direction. He hooks up his rig and hopes for the best. But since the ceiling is so low, we'll see if she can, she can make it out there. Can only try. No dice. This one simply wedged in too tight. It's going to take more than brute force. It's going to take some creativity to get this one out. 
Meanwhile, across town, Bill and Marcy, the husband and wife team who own O'Hare Towing, are in the process of building a brand new state-of-the-art facility. It's very exciting because in the short time it's been going on, it seems like it's progressing very quickly. I think it's a hell of a deal that I'm 40% over budget in the first week of working on the place. I figured I would have gotten that conversation somewhere a little farther in the process. Hey, doesn't Gucci or Ralph Lauren make light fixtures? I mean, I don't want to miss out on anything. Stop it. No, you act like I just spend, spend, spend. He likes to just nag me and complain about it, but really, if it didn't get done, he would be like, you know, why don't we have something nice, you know? So, I mean, he likes it to be nice, and he wants it to be nice. He just likes to turn the screws on me about spending money. We're gonna I'm hang gonna out. have a flag that just has a dollar sign on it. Let <laughs> <laughs> I me mean, just write, with a big just red, the... With a big red thing for it, like, I used to have money and now I don't. <laughs> this has always been our goal, is to build a place of our own, you know, something that we created ourselves. Basically, what I'm gonna have to do is just do a few more toes and work a little harder so I can give her what she wants, and that's pretty much how things happen in my life. I, I, I don't think I can take much more of this. Time to get the show on the road. The, the past two days that I've been there, I'd much rather be standing in the median somewhere up to my knees in mud and snow, dealing with some crash or an incident. Bill will love it once he sees it, but you know, getting to that point will be like, are you kidding me? Thanks. I will. I See definitely will. Thank you. Can I go tow something now? No. Coming up, the boys from O'Hare take a torch to the trapped trailer. I'm gonna cut the sides of the trailer off. Basically what I'm gonna use is the torch. And hope their plan doesn't go up in flames. Hopefully there's no flammable materials in there. And Joey picks a fight with a tractor trailer that doesn't want to cooperate. Oh, this one's just gonna be a nasty pig. She's gonna start breaking and then I'm gonna get pissed off. In downtown Chicago, there's a 53-foot trailer wedged underneath a bridge. Javier is called in a service truck to assist at the scene, bringing help in the form of tools and two O'Hare service technicians, Ryan and Jeremy. They start a new plan. The impact of the bridge caused the belly of the trailer to bow inward, so Javier chained the undercarriage to add some additional stability so it doesn't collapse in on itself. I'm gonna start chaining the belly of the trailer while Ryan hopes that slicing off the top of the trailer will provide the clearance they need to get it out from under the bridge. Uh, pretty much I'm gonna cut the sides of the trailer off. Basically what I'm gonna use is the torch. Part of the problem is that the walls are lined with wood. So, uh, you know, fire and wood, that usually means bigger fire. It's good. Hopefully there's no flammable materials in there. Uh, if the tra trailer catches on fire, I have to put it out with the fire extinguishers. wood-lined interior of the trailer keeps catching on fire, making it too dangerous to continue. They haven't burned the trailer down, but they haven't made any progress either. Javier has no choice. He has to call Bill. The city Lower Wacker Drive to assist 307. Okay, I'm on my way. Meanwhile, in Schiller Park, a semi-driver got in a rush and tried to roll through a snowbank but it was solid ice. And now his 42,000 pound load of steel backing plates ain't going anywhere. 902, I got a uh, check the trailer. That needs a winch out, check the trailer needs a winch out. I got it at River Road. Yeah. Once the driver realized his mistake, he gunned the engine and tried to force the truck over the ice. He had another example of flooring the accelerator first and asking questions later. That burn mark is where the gentleman was stuck on the snowbank where he thought he could just floor it. 
Well, it's a bad idea. Don't ever just think you can floor it. Joey takes the call alone. He plans to pull the guy off the ice, but the massive weight of the truck could make this simple recovery a lot more difficult. No, oh, this one's just gonna be a nasty pig. She's gonna start breaking, and then I'm gonna get pissed off. Joey has to work fast, or the load of steel could push the truck over on its side. The weight of the payload could snap the trailer in two. Hey, Tone. But as Joey starts the job, he realizes he needs backup and calls in Tony and his 60-ton rotator. I'm gonna have to get you up here when I pick this thing, just in case. Once I pick that high side, there's a point to where it could go over. And he's my backup. Some good time. The plan? Tony holds the trailer back on its high side to keep it from tipping over, while Joey lifts the back end with his boom, moving him off the mound of ice. Keep your real high. When I pick it, I don't want to dimple that roof. Cut! Or put my boom out. When I pick it, she'll be over it. Skitch it right against the bottom half. But once it's off the ice, Joey realizes their job's not over. The metal plates inside the trailer have shifted to the driver's side. You see that? How bad she's leaning? That whole load has shifted. A load shift is what happens when a trailer gets jolted and its cargo is knocked out of place. Until the cargo is rebalanced, the truck won't drive straight and might even flip over. This guy can't go anywhere right now, and uh, somehow we're going to have to back him into this dock, and I'm not quite sure how it's going to work out. This is just a recipe for a catastrophic failure. Your best bet, honestly, is let us get a pallet jack out here, get a couple pallets over, and then go from there. To call this one a win, Joey's team needs to redistribute the steel backing plates inside the trailer. All right, me and Tony are going to try to manhandle these things, but they're 6,000 pounds apiece, so. It takes some time and a whole lot of muscle, but they get the load properly reshifted, and now they can just back the trailer into the loading dock, where the driver was trying to go in the first place. If you want to try to make the run, we got to say at least you got into the dock, okay. all right? And that's just to seal us up. So we're out of here now. The guy's yeah. in the dock. Good job. All right. Let's get out of here. Next, it's Bill to the rescue as O'Hare's owner takes over the scene. This is one thing you got to love about working with Bill. He actually gets in the middle of it. He knows what he's doing. Four hours ago, a semi sandwiched itself under a bridge in downtown Chicago. Javier has been working hard to free it, but he's out of ideas. He's tried pushing, pulling, and torching. Jeremy, get in here! Luckily, Bill is only moments away. Javier might be a little over his head, or he might not quite know what he's got to do. Every one of these jobs is different. Plan A is not necessarily going to stay plan A. It's one of those things that we just got to handle. I mean, the customer doesn't want to hear about problems. They want results, and we're the guys that give it to them. Bill arrives on the scene and quickly changes the plan. You start taking the wheels off. Okay. His plan is to remove the rear wheels and hook up his record to the trapped trailer, suspending the rig between both O'Hare trucks. All Bill has to do now is throw it in neutral and let Javier pull them both out. I was able to, to lower the truck right down to the uh, brake drums so I could gain probably 8, 10, 12 inches of height clearance. Then Javier drove forward and I left my truck in neutral and we carried it out from underneath lower Wacker onto the first ramp on Monroe. Javier's going a little faster. We're being towed by Javier in the trailer. Yeah, but we're doing okay. He's doing, doing just fine. A little fast, but it's all right. Good, see? Oh, I'm going on now. I better get out there. 
they successfully free the trailer from under the bridge, but their job isn't over. After putting the wheels back on, they have to prep it for towing. The thing that we're doing now is just to get it home. We're going to cinch it together for the right now. It's about 15 foot wide. It's supposed to be 8 and a half feet wide. So we'll put a couple chains in here and draw it together, but otherwise it's too wide to go through the toll booths. But first, Bill has to finish cutting off the roof. If we don't deal with it now, it's going to fly off as we're towing it and hit somebody. So this is one thing you got to love about working with Bill. He actually gets in the middle of it. He actually does, like, he knows what he's doing. Now that the trailer is roadworthy, it's finally ready to be towed back to O'Hare shop. And even though this tow didn't go exactly according to plan, it served as a valuable learning experience for some of O'Hare's younger operators. I like uh, seeing a, a younger guy getting excited. And when they see the whole process unfold, they're like, oh, that was pretty cool. So this one worked well. It's been another challenging day for O'Hare Towing, but Bill and his team have proven that they have the machines and the manpower to handle any wreck. From winching out a bottomed out tandem trailer. Hey, I'm glad we are here together. To shifting 42,000 pounds of cargo. Even rescuing a tractor trailer from the clutches of downtown bridge. No tow is too tough for the boys at O'Hare. The last time I sent Marcy over to the, to the new building without me, it was about a $40,000 uh, speed bump of uh, hand orders. So they have to make it? So no, it's, they, not, it's not a they, video. If they make it, they could do something out of like diamond plate and... No, I'm thinking higher, but if we're gonna make it, the, the possibilities are endless. Endless, yeah. Just oh, don't tell Bill. <laughs>